Good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome at the Transport Forum, 6th of February, um, 2020, the first Transport Forum event for 2020. Thanks to Trade and Investment Project Natal hosting us today, with Standard Bank being, being the venue sponsor. Thank you very much for Standard Bank. Uh, it's great being with you guys, and uh, we're looking forward to a great event uh, with the industry today. The topic for today is um, investment and transformation and transport. We've got great presenters presenting today. Um, and the important thing is that uh, we want to give recognition to our sponsors. Ladies and gents, you obviously these events are for free, complimentary. So somebody must pay for this. And that's why we have sponsors. Um, and I would like to um, give recognition to Trade and Investment KwaZulu Natal. Uh, Sheila is going to talk to us just now, and she will obviously tell you more about what they do. So, uh, Sheila, thank you very much. She's been instrumental in actually getting this event going. Uh, so I'll give Sheila just now the opportunity to do the official welcome and so on, and she'll tell you more about trade investment because we're not tall. Um, then also we've got Paxi, um, Bronwyn Arnsen, she's one of our presenters. Ron, I don't, know, I don't know if you want to come and say his words now, or will you combine it with your speech, talking about Paxi? You'll combine it with a speech then. Okay. Thank you for Paxi. They are a new sponsor. A few months now, a gold sponsor with the Transport Forum. We've got Kulula, uh, actually Comair, the airline. Um, so I definitely fly Comair. And uh, we appreciate their support. It's their second year now being a gold sponsor with the Transport Forum. So it's obviously Kalula and British Airways, operated by Kome. We've got uh, Global Trade Solution. Is there somebody from Global Trade Solution who want to come and say a few words about GTS? I know they're in the audience, sometimes they're shy to come. Want to say a few words quickly about GTS? Please do. Please do. Good morning, everybody. I'm from Global Trade Solution. My name's Valerie. In essence, we are facilitating importers and exporters. We automate a lot of the import and export processes. We work on very exciting initiatives with regards to customs to customs connectivity. We're very involved in the SACU data exchange between Botswana, Lesotho, Namibia, and Swaziland. I know that there are a few transporters that we have been working quite closely with. Um, Further to that, we also have a very exciting initiative um, which is working with the end-to-end -end supply chain, creating a glass supply chain right from origin through to delivery at a respective DC or store. So if you need to find out any more information around that, you can spot me in the crowd and we'll chat later. Thank you. Thank you, Global Trade Solution. That's their first year being a gold sponsor, and hopefully many to come. Um, anybody from Open Learning Group want to say a few words? The first year also being a gold sponsor with the Transport Forum. They're going to be, in June, we're going to have a skills program with the Transport Forum. We're going to play an instrumental role in that event. We've got Oricon, Mike. Oricon's been a gold sponsor for about five years now. So Mike, please come and say a few words. Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Santonda. I'm a director of, of Oricon. Um, we are a, a global uh, multidisciplinary consulting engineering and advisory company. Um, I head up the uh, African Urban Mobility Center uh, for Oricon, which basically involves uh, working with autonomous vehicles, um, connected vehicles, uh, sewer management systems, um, intelligent transport systems. We involved with sustainability, so electric vehicles, um, where to put uh, electric charging points, uh, and all that sort of thing. So quite an exciting um, uh, time for someone like myself who come up through the traffic engineering and transportation planning discipline into, into urban mobility with all these exciting different things happening. So if you want to know more, um, like Valerie, I'm also in the, cl in the crowd, so stop me and I'll, I'll have to chat to you about the kind of stuff we do uh, in Oricon as far as urban mobility is concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Oricon. 
Um, Frighten Trading Weekly, is Jody here yet or Yolandi? I know they're coming, so we'll give them time later on. Um, they've been actually very much since the start also of the Strandford Forum being a gold sponsor, but I'll give Jody later on an opportunity to talk about them. It's owned by the Now Media Group, online magazine as well. C-Track, Chris, gold sponsor since the inception of the Strandford Forum. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Harry, and everyone else for the opportunity. We're proud to be associated with the Transport Forum, and uh, myself and Dominic are representing C-Track. We are a fleet management company that uh, use our tracking as a basis for fleet management. Uh, we design custom solutions for the tracking industry for your specific uh, fleet requirements and your fleet needs. Uh, and if you have any other questions regarding your, your, your tracking or fleet requirements or camera solutions, you can approach us. We're also in the crowd, and we'll be meeting with you all later. Thank you very much. Thank you, C-Track. Railways Africa magazine, Philippa, uh, she's not here today. It's all about rail infrastructure, also a magazine. Ladies and gents, subscribe to these magazines. They play a big role, an instrumental role in this industry, informing us. Um, VIX Technology, um, they're not here today. Or am I missing out? Somebody here from VIX? All right, they, um, automatic fare collection, modeling, uh, transport operations, public transport operations, integration with public transport technology. Um, I, know they, I know they do City of Durban, Go Metro, uh, Go, Go Durban as well, uh, in terms of automatic fare collection, City of Cape Town and so on. So great company, also a gold sponsor now for the first year. We've got the Bits Transport, Bits Transport Center of, Bits Transnet Center of Systems Engineering from Bits University. Systems engineers, training obviously at University, great having them with us for many years already. And then we've got University of Johannesburg, it's actually Professor Jackie Walters uh, and Dr. Nolene Pisa. They've been involved with the Strandford Forum since the inception. Prof. Jackie Walters actually being instrumental to myself, actually advisor and a mentor to myself to make this happening. Prof. is not here today, but uh, as I said, he played an instrumental role. So uh, there's other universities also involved, like University of Stellenbosch, University of Cape Town, in Victoria University, they're also involved in the Transport Forum. Some of them more on an ad hoc basis. These we've listed here are more gold sponsors. You know, they, they sign an annual agreement with the Transport Forum. So let's give all the sponsors a big hand. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, I want to First, I have a Sheila Dyer from, from Trade Invasion Cause of Nell, our host today. And then after her, Kathy Bell from Standard Bank will talk to us. Um, I'm going to give them this lapel microphone. Uh, Paul just told me that this microphone is not doing that good on the broadcast. So we're going to give you these microphones to make use of. So uh, Sheila is going to talk to us about what that she's going to do the welcome and introduction to Trade and Investment Cause of Nell. Thank you very much. Morning, everyone. Um, so, <coughs> firstly, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone, to each and every one. Um, I do understand that we all have busy schedules, so um, it is encouraging to see um, all of you here this morning. So in terms of uh, our relationship with uh, the Transport Forum, it does, 
does go back a few years ago. Um, I think, um, my, uh, Harry, if you can uh, recall, I actually um, sort of checked you down and then we had a discussion and, and, um, and I think we've had, if it's just one uh, uh, session together and this is our second session with the Transport Forum. So it is a working relationship. Oh, it's the third. <laughs> it is a working relationship with, um, with Harry and the Transport Forum. And, and this is actually the mandate of trade and investment KwaZulu Natal. Uh, we um, are mandated to work with um, the, the various uh, industry associations. Um, so, uh, yeah, with that, I'd like to just introduce myself. I'm Hashila Daya. Uh, from Trade and Investment KwaZulu Natal. Um, so I want to give you a bit of background on Trade and Investment KwaZulu Natal or TIKZN in short. We're the official investment pr promotion agency for the province of K uh, KZN. Um, each province does have an investment promotion agency um, and we um, assist and concentrate on, on KZN. Uh, we fall under the Department of Economic Development, Tourism and Environmental Affairs up in Peter Maritzburg. Um, we are an implementing agency and a facilitate, facilitating agency. And our primary uh, focus and mandate is to encourage both foreign and, and local um, investment into KZN. Um, this is um, twofold. It's to actually um, increase the GDP of KZN as well as to reduce the unemployment, um, uh, the unemployment figures um, in KZN. Uh, within TI KZN, we have, um, okay, so before I get there, we do work with a number of sister entities. Um, some of them um, is the Department of Tourism, KZN Growth Fund, Dubai Trade Port. Um, we do have a form commission here and then obviously our development finance institutions such as Itala, um, the IDC, and then also um, our IDZs, um, the one being um, in Richards Bay. So some of our functional areas, um, as I said, um, investment promotion is actually a key uh, department within trade and investment, KwaZulu Natal, um, because that drives the whole organization um, in terms of bringing in those investments, both foreign and local. Um, <coughs> coupled with that, we have another very important department, and that's our Export Development and Promotion Department. And this department would um, actually uh, assist companies um, with a number of capacity building training sessions, and then take them through the, ne the necessary steps, steps to become export ready. Um, they actually then would take these companies to international platforms. So um, should there be a multi-sectoral um, platform um, overseas, um, a company would um, then uh, apply. And um, we do have financial assistance in place uh, in terms of accommodation and flights. Um, where companies can get up to 60% of their flights and accommodation paid for by TIKZN just to actually um, expose that company to another market um, and therefore, uh, you know, obviously um, get that company to increase their sales and, and um, eventually, um, yeah, for, for the other market to order their goods and services from um, the local company. Uh, we do have our supporting uh, departments like your communications department, your uh, marketing, uh, finance, human resources, um, and, and so forth. And then the last department is the business, business retention and expansion department. This is the, de this is the department that I uh, fall within. Uh, within this department, we assist companies um, with um, in a number of areas. Um, if it's a foreign company coming to invest in, um, in KZN, uh, we then assist them with their business and work visa permits. Um, we assist with um, their finance requirements. Um, should they want to apply for um, loan funding through the development finance institutions, uh, we will carry, um, handhold them through that process. 
Um, we will also do uh, the various uh, DTI incentives. Um, and then within TIKZN, we do have a number of in-house incentives, the one that I just mentioned, uh, which can assist you with your flights and accommodation. The other one is um, uh, what we have uh, uh, called a technical assistance fund. Um, this fund uh, is a cost-sharing fund. It's capped at 300000 and it's for any uh, um, unlocking any uh, business challenge of a technical nature. So if a company wants to become ISO compliant or you need your health and safety uh, 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 the, the processes in place, um, this fund can actually then fund you 50% uh, of, uh, of that cost. Uh, and then lastly, we do have a number of business support intervention funding, um, uh, funding mechanisms available. Um, this is for your, um, your lean manufacturing um, and the likes. And then we also um, target uh, youth and women owned uh, within that as well. So those, uh, in a nutshell, is um, the, um, the overall uh, uh, departments of TIKZN. So we work within sectors, and, and in terms of growth opportuni opportunities, we've, um, we have identified a number of them. Um, and, and um, there are a number of hubs in, in KZN that have been identified, like your aquaculture, your creative industries, um, your oceans economy. And, um, and obviously, transport does play a very important, um, important role across all of the sectors. Just in terms of the sectors, um, you know, we concentrate a lot of manufacturing. As we all know, manufacturing is, is, um, is very important. Um, and under manufacturing, it's obviously automotive that's, um, that's quite key. Uh, your chemicals, clothing and textiles. And then, um, uh, like I said um, earlier on, transport does cut across all of these sectors. Um, I spoke um, earlier about, uh, uh, you know, our export department that also plays a key role in um, um, at TIKZN. And I think it's very important for, um, for companies to become uh, export ready in the manufacturing sector um, so that they can export um, their products and services um, and grow the company and grow the economy of KZN. So, uh, yeah, there are a number of um, export markets that we deal with, um, which is like our top 10 uh, markets, uh, like China and the U.S., um, also um, nearer to home is um, Namibia, Botswana, Mozambique. Mm. So just in terms of um, the RAND value, um, of some of these markets, um, Botswana is 4.8 million, um, Namibia 6.8 million, um, near to home Mozambique 2.6 million. Um, there are other um, um, markets near to home um, that uh, that uh, do contribute, um, including Zimbabwe and Lesotho. So major companies that we deal with, um, obviously, um, yeah, some of the big crown jewel clients, like your Samsungs, Toyotas, Unilevers, um, Bell Equipment, Mondi, Defi, Apollo, um, your Shell, your BHP Bulletin, um, and your, okay, Sapi as well. Uh, so that is um, me. In terms of um, TIKZN, we, we, we like to punt and we like to offer our investors um, the uniqueness of KwaZulu-Natal. There's still a wealth of investment opportunities in KZN. It is, um, we, we, we do consider KZN as a diverse economy. Um, and... Um, I mean, South Africa, as we all know it, is a global gateway um, to the African market. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. 
I just want to apologize that I didn't have my presentation on PowerPoint. Uh, there had been some issues, but I will send it through to Harry and he can make, ava make it available to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, as Sheila, a little gift of appreciation. Um, great being hosted by Trade Investment Quasi Natal, and we're looking forward to our perpetual agreement and relationship with you guys. Thank you very much for that. Um, ladies and gents, the next presenter then will be Kathy Bell. She's a transport industry asset risk specialist of Standard Bank. She's also instrumental to the road transport management system. Uh, please use this one. Such irritating. She always gives me a hard time. Harry, so you know what uh, Now you must negotiate with the, yes, with the, the yes. broadcast director. I'll do this one. Sweet yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, I just want to make sure I can speak with comfort. It's very important. And I, I'll try and stay here. Yeah? But, um, okay. Please, the cool. Thank you. All right, everyone. So thank you for that presentation and thank you for your support. It's marvelous to hear how you're promoting investment in KZN. It's one of my favorite provinces because some of my favorite operators are in the room. And my favorite colleagues are in the room too. Yes, cool, thank you. Thank you very much. Okie dokie, so, so I thought I wanna do something a little bit different and welcome. Very nice chatting to you this morning. So are you expecting me to talk about finance? Sustainable consideration for investment finance? Yes, who's expecting that? Who's expecting that? Because then, then we'd have to have a sidebar conversation. Because if I look at the transporters in the room, and if I look at the industry, and I look at the level of certification that's taking place around compliance, and I look at the benefits that are derived from considerations for investment, it's not about the funding. Mm -mm. It's more than that. Am I right? You run a very successful operation, multiple generations in the business. If I was to say to you, your time is one of the key considerations for a successful transport operation, would I be on track? Okay, so how do you quantify time? I'll tell you how you quantify time. Is when the operation is safe, when drivers are happy and healthy, make happy profits, and they pivot in the business. When you don't have crashes, and if you do have crashes, it's because of a third party, unavoidable. And you've got drivers that are? receiving awards from Volvo for being green band drivers, the best of the best, 100% for driving. And how do you get that done? How do you obtain that? It's not the rants and the cents. Ted, am I right? The rants and the cents matter, of course. If anybody here drives a Volvo car and anybody here invests in Volvo trucks, which one do you think is going to give you the best return? The Volvo truck. Simply because Volvo's right now, try and get your hand on a second-hand Volvo. Mr. Malcolm Gush is going to love the fact that I'm saying so. Nothing wrong with the other brands. Mm -mm. Jumping to a, to a Mercedes, the new Mercs, they are beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. Really lovely. You sit high, seat comfortable, absolutely awesome. And you've got the fleet board that gives you all the information that you need. But right now, you're driving a Volvo and you're running side slippers. Mm, they like gold. Okay, so, and, and, and FAW Brett, welcome, very welcome, very welcome. So, to take my point further, I brought some goodies with, and you know, anybody who's been to the previous presentations that you've had, I'm passionate about what we do for the market, and that is doing the other things, young Ted, which is more than the rants and the things. Access to capital and having financing, that's a decision that you make because you have to purchase something at a particular price. Hopefully, in that purchasing process, You've done the numbers. You've worked out that it's going to cost me 14 rounds per ton per kilometer, that I'm not going to run at 11 rounds per ton per kilometer. Am I right? Welcome. Cater Reach Dropwood Consultants, welcome. That's very exciting, that development. Very exciting, welcome. And this young lady, I just wanted to say, I saw her there from the Witt Institute for Social and Economic Research. Oh, you were expecting some more things from me, but you know what? I'll give you the, the social bit. So, investment in your drivers. Investment in your drivers around the concept of RTMS. So 
you all know that I'm very keen on Artemis, very pro Artemis, for the simple reason that by implementing it without even being audited, already it brings savings to the business. I have a customer, his name is Sunshine Bennett from Africa Link, and Sunshine will tell you that six years ago, Sunshine had six old Skora Skora trucks. We met on a Saturday, we sat down and I looked at these Skora Skoras and I said, Sunshine, we have to make a plan. And this plan is going to be, I'm not just going to give you a whole bunch of new trucks. It's not how it works. We're going to take your old, six old new trucks, old trucks. And young said, we're going to replace them with two new ones. UD450 wasn't evolved in this instance. They didn't have stock at the time. And the UD450 came in just at the right sweet spot for what he was going to do. And right now, six years later, how many trucks do you think he has, young Sunshine Bennett? Oh, and 25 years ago, he was a homeless dude. Homeless. This man worked his way up from being a driver, a cleaner, logistics controller, and bought his own business, bought his own truck. Okay, let me, let me, let me break the ice. 86. He has 86 combinations. So, so a story only has merit if you can put a face or a name. You must Google Young Sunshine Bennett. Oh, and there's more to Young Sunshine. And I love these case studies. I can give... I can speak about you with, with, with forever and a day, but I'm just going to use this little example, forgive me, just for today. Because you run an awesome business. So Sunshine, not only does he now have 86 trucks combinations, bearing in mind, that's about 2.6 million rand investment, the rand and cents of it. He also builds trailers. Bennett, start the police, he built his first batch. Lukash, in December, he got his homologation certificate. How awesome is that? That's a determined individual. So has he made decisions? Has he given due consideration? Yes, he has. And it all kind of like, it all works out. He competes with his 86 trucks against operators that have got a fleet of 4,000 and 1,000. I think you all know who I'm talking about. And he's got a combination. He doesn't just have side tippers. He runs for Sopaku. He runs, and he doesn't mind me telling you this. By the way, I have permission. And I must just tell you that I don't officially represent the media voice of Standard Bank, I'm sharing my transport experience. I must just put it out there. You're welcome to quote me, but it's purely for sharing key insights. So Young Sunshine also runs for breweries. He also runs for RCL. He runs some coal. So he's got torches. He's got links. He's got uh, Satipas. So he's got enough, enough board share. Young man from UCO, welcome. Why did you ask him, are you not? You're about to do your RTMS. And the reason for that is, it's a decision that you make around what you've already invested in your business. And it is sustainability that you're after in the business. So you want to be able to know that when you've bought that big truck, that gorgeous Merck, FOW, um, uh, UD, uh, Scania, uh, or Duff, it's a one of five. Uh, so all of them, you know, R700, uh, who've I left out, who've I left out? Um, Hmm? Who did I leave out? Who did I leave out? Iveco. Iveco, okay. And you got, and, and that's a 2 million rand rig, technically, right? And you're growing maybe 2 million rand worth of cargo. You want to know that that driver who represents your business because your name is on the torties on the side, on the door, that you've done what you need to do in making that consideration, that financial commitment, young Harry, to make it work. How do you make it work? The person, the man, the woman. Oh, women drivers, I have to tell the story about bus for. The lady drivers, the women drivers, I don't assume they're ladies, they're women. They have less crashes, less crashes. They're more courteous. They have happier passengers, and you know why? They don't jerk when they pull off and break harshly. The passengers don't do this. Just a matter of interest, but let me not get distracted. Let me not get distracted. So the reality is that you have systems and processes in place that can make the consideration that you give more than just the rants and the things. It's about the people, the people, the person, that pivot that's got their hands on the wheel, their bum in the seat, and foot on the pedal, the drivers. Oh, I must put it closer. Okay. So does that make sense? Does it make sense? I've got a lot of nods in the room. So you run your business. You know that. How important are the drivers? Very important. But remember, without your guidance and you setting the foundation, and the team you have in place, all the systems and procedures, the business wouldn't be 
as strong as it is. But the drivers are important. They key. So when you're looking at investment, decisioning, it's investment in time. Time. It takes time. Annie, welcome. She's new. She joined Standard Bank. When did you join us? November from another bank. She joined the Blue Bank. Her blood will be blue very soon. Very, very, very soon. Very soon. It's already blue. Welcome. So I think what we're trying to say is that from an investment perspective, it's not just about the rants and cents. Harry, you're using your phone. It's rude if you listen. It's really, it's really about the other things that make the business a success. FB and transport, Meneer, you agree? You agree? You have a divergent view. I'd love to hear it, and then I'll challenge you outside. <laughs> so, so I brought some goodies with. So am I right? Are drivers important? They are? They are? How many transport companies have you visited? Not that many. Do it. It's amazing to see what they do. We have pockets of excellence in South Africa. We have the Logistics Achiever Award in this country. Best practice. Best practice. South Africa, we lead the way. When it comes to self-regulation, I must just tell you, Standard Bank hosted the ISO Marketing uh, Committee from Sweden last year for a week. We had, we had a delegate from Nepal, from China, from India, from Stockholm, Sweden, UK, and, um, and they were all quite impressed with what we've done with self-regulation. We've got almost 42,000 truck bus trailers under self-regulation. There is no such case study. The UN Decade of Action, which finishes this year, this year, 2020, we didn't sleep. We have over 300 case studies of self-regulation. Self-regulation is nothing other than a decision, a consideration you give to safety of drivers, not overloading or underloading, efficiency, productivity, and it's a decision you make around sustainability. Without that concept of wanting to be sustainable, how do you know what to consider? Artem gives you that. So I'm not promoting RTMS in as much as it's just the big fit for everyone. And in fact, operators can adopt the standard without being audited. Uh, sometimes the RTMS certification is necessary for some contracts. But I brought some goodies with. I brought some goodies with. I love paper things. I love that. So who's seen this gorgeous little booklet? Sharing the roads in harmony. Sharing the roads in harmony. And you know what's important? It deals with tr trucks, cars, pedestrians, cyclists, motorbikes. And inside, we have things for drivers. It's information for drivers around blind spots. Who has organized these? Who's bought this from Patrick O'Leary from Fleetwatch? Who's bought and given to their drivers? Who? Not yet, you haven't. Not yet. But you may have your own. So you may have your own. We you do safety talks for your drivers. You may have your own. This is a very good book. But I think it's a consideration. What do you do? If you don't know that it's available, how do you know that you must get that? I'm telling you it is from Patrick O'Leary from Fleetwatch. And this gorgeous little book, I don't think the engine team was here. Is the engine here? Engine in the room? Three punch for them. But this is awesome. The A to Z of driver health. This is good for drivers, so drivers can understand. One of the key, the key aspects of around crashes, and we have crash investigators in the room, 80%, 83% of crashes are driver error due to fatigue or lack of wellness. Diabetes. Side effects of diabetes is they can't see. You can't just do a PRDP every two years and go for a medical. You have to do that more frequently if you want to make sure that health, mass, uh, health is managed. Under RTMS, chronic illnesses are managed every three months. The driver goes and sees an industrial nurse and they manage the health care. All confidential. But it's the concept of making a decision that is sustainable. Am I on the right path for you? For you as well? I want to see who this young lady is. From national, oh, from DOT. Oh, you got to love her. Oh, you've got to love what you do for you about self-regulation. Do not overload. Do not drive fatigue. Don't damage bridges. Don't damage our roads. Implement PBS so that you can have a 50% road wear reduction. Peruvian, factual. And KZN, are you from national or KZN? National. John Matateng with Advocate John Matateng. Letitia, what's not? Are you new there? Which department? Integrated transport. Oh, you're on the, on the uh, okay, you with Lesiba. On the integrated planning for public transport. I must introduce you to some people. I must. Especially around PBS as well. Are you with the lady? Are you with her? You, you're also from DOT. Okay, all righty. But you must chat. 
These are the things that we're doing as an industry. And remember, one of the key actions of the decade of action was to reduce crashes by 50%. 50 million people were supposed, less people were supposed to die. National, uh, of course, not in South Africa, but that was globally. Did we achieve, we had some reductions, we had some improvements, but I think what vice is important is around sustainability. You know who I'm talking about, from Doc over there. Yes, 100%. So from a self-regulation perspective, it falls within the key framework from DOT, self-regulation, where operators willingly adopt a standard to make sure pre-trip inspections, not overloading or underloading, is implemented. And that enhances sustainability. So I think when one looks at considerations, it's not just about the runs in the sense. It's once you've made that commitment that you then extract the value. So I've mentioned this little booklet. I've also got some other information, but I, I, I will share it with people that want to come through to us. Um, and of course, my favorite is how many of these little pamphlets do you put up in your driver's training room or driver's debriefing room? Information about drivers so that they know that when they take a weekend, what the impact is on their health if they have had time to celebrate with their family. There's a time and there's a place for everything. I also have another little one, very interesting one. Who gets this little booklet, by the way? From who gets this book? Who reads this book? This little booklet from FPW. It is amazing. Oh, Harry, push it, put your hand up because one of your sponsors. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's amazing. It's amazing. I didn't, for instance, know till I arrived at the airport, St. Seria, on Monday, that Kevin Martin had passed away. He was involved with the Harbour Carriers. It's quite, I didn't know. I read it here. I didn't know. So, condolences to the family. But this magazine is quite amazing. It's got lots of information. No other magazine covers this. Factual, short, sweet, relevant. And it's time. It's part of your investment decision. To make sure, who gets a, who gets a free pot? Harry, met that. Harry mentioned that earlier on about reading. Keep yourself, that's part of investing. And making sure that when you are treating your assets, that you've made these considerations, that you know what's happening. Am I right, Ted? Focus magazine, all of those magazines, there's lots of information around the industry. And the Fleetwood magazine has got Max Brown's operating benchmarks. Who uses those operating benchmarks to make sure that you're charging the right rates for different, different options? You must, look at the, you must look at the recent one. Fleetwatch, the operating benchmark from Max Brown. Max, I think, is 85 this year. 85. He's been in this industry amazing, in an amazing period of time. He implemented Formula logistic supply chain, this fast supply chain. An awesome chap. Awesome. So I think for me, Harry, how much time do I have? I'm nearly done. Ten minutes. Oh, lovely. So, so I think for me, to create the awareness around, it's not just about the money. It's not about the rents and the cents. But everything else that goes with that. Make a difference to your business. So we've got some telematics companies in the room. They have made RTMS much easier because they create reports. So you don't have to cut on an entire forest. You can actually use your integrated telematics to provide information at the push of a button. Especially for the coal companies, the guys that transport for some of the mines. If there's a crash on a mine or there's an incident on the mine, within five minutes of that incident, you have to have all the information. RTMS helps you to have the standards in place, but the telematics companies can help you draw that report. So push your telematics companies, ask them to support, create the right environment, create the right reports, make sure that you can be effective. And of course, some of the, like, like Merck has the fleet board, which is integrated, it's on board, which is very useful. So does Volvo, they've got something very similar. So I think from my perspective, the opportunity that I have to engage is to just share that is not just the expectation from a bank to talk about the runs in the sense. It's really everything else that goes into the business. And what is key in that business is what your teams know, the responsibilities they take, and to make sure that every single truck that's got your name on and trailer or bus is roadworthy. The driver's trained, the driver's not fatigued, the driver's inspired, the driver's motivated, the driver is happy and healthy. Because what you don't want is you want, don't want your truck. That's the one that's rolled off a bridge, or your one that's hit a bridge, or your one that's fallen over, or, or it's caused a, a 40 kilometer pile up, back up. We've had those as well. So I think maybe just in conclusion, from a so of course, I know crash investigators, you know far more about this, but we're trying to do the prevention side, to avoid, to prevent crashes. 
and to reduce the incidence significantly. The cost of crashes, Doc can help me out here. In fact, the RTMC report that I read recently, they estimate it's over 180 billion, the cost of crashes to the economy. So that's a few equal roads that could have been built. That's, that's um, half of one of the power stations. That's huge. Could have, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's just the cost. I don't think we understand the true cost when there is a crash, apart from the insurance claims, it's everything else that goes with that. So I think what I'm going to do, Harry, since I've probably got five minutes, is there any specific questions in this forum? Because I have five minutes. Ted. Thank you. One very demot demotivating factor in transport is the amount of uh, skullduggery amongst the law enforcement. Uh, and that's a really hot topic. We've got certain roads there. We've had drivers stop with absolute bulldust claims against them, etc. They want e-wallet transferred immediately, otherwise the truck is impounded. We run a good fleet. We don't do anything illegal. And we are so sick to death. If you ask a, a policeman for his ID, he doesn't wear his name badge. He doesn't have his, um, his uh, appointment on him. And what do you do? The Premier of the province said to me, you must ins insist on a misuse. I said, how do you insist? giving his ID when you refuse it. There's nothing you can do as a member of the public. And our drivers go through hell with this. <laughs> yeah, so I think I'm not, sh so I don't have the answers. I really don't have, but what I believe collectively in the room we do have that. So it's, I think it's a good point to raise and we must raise it all the time. But what I am also aware of is that um, the project we run, the Patrick Lillier from Fleet Watch, so every three months there's a training session for the traffic officials and it's done countrywide. Part of that is creating awareness around not that it's, and, and I think, again, it's like anything in the room. In this room, we've got pockets of excellence. We've got awesome transporters. But that doesn't mean that everybody in KZN does that. So you've got, you've got good operators and you've got bad operators. And I guess the same will apply when it comes to traffic officials. But what we have found, which is very encouraging, is there seems to be a great willingness from the RTMC and from the traffic officials in the provinces. And even here, it's a queen. If you look at Daniel Hirelau, how they've, how they've promoted and supported Patrick's Break and Tower Watch, which is really aimed at providing a skill set and additional training to the traffic officials around the enforcement. So they can actually jump under a trailer, check stack adjusters, make sure brake boosters are aligned, and there's nothing, um, yeah, and that the uh, load sensing valves haven't been um, disconnected. So I think it's a valid point, Ted, and, and I think one must always raise it in all the right platforms, and, and I don't think that in this platform will necessarily give you any, any answers, but it'll give you time and to create that awareness. But I think what is important is, um, I think the doors are always open. I've always found Itikweni and also all the other provinces and the municipalities, and certainly from the RTMC perspective, that they are very, very keen to get that feedback. So there is a willingness to address it. I'm, I'm, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, Ted, I'm not going to dismiss it. I mean, I certainly, I mean, you, 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 you're speaking from, from your own experience. But again, there's a platform and there's, a, there's an air time and wants to just channel that where it needs to go. But I think maybe for overall, any other questions? This, this gentleman, did you have a question? The lady over there, you have a question. Oh, yeah, thank you. I just want to get more information around Young Sunshine. Bennett, yeah. Um, how much um, business support and, and growth did he get? Uh, did he get all his funding from Standard Bank? Or what was his journey around, around that? Thank you. Good question. You like the Sunshine Bennett one. So I should actually, him answer that. I should have, it's, he's not here now. I'm trying to, uh-uh. I couldn't, I'm trying to, mm -mm. So I think, the, so the question was, how much business, say the hours. Oh, sorry, um, I was interested in young Bennett to say how much business support did he get from Standard Bank and did he get all his funding from you? That's just the funding part, but just the channeling and the management of his company, the SME, SME, SME side. Okay, so, so I mentioned Sunshine Bennett, but there's more. There's New Era, there's more. There's Makopar Logistics, there's more. So I think the short version is, yes, we fund them, Standard Bank. 
We visit them, we engage them, we talk to them like this. We, we love that. Anybody who knows when I come and visit, my colleagues actually roll their eyes because we'll talk forever. Said the other day, we could hardly leave the room. And when I visit this customer as well, there's lots of talking that takes place. And I think that's what we do. We kind of like talk a lot. We try and think we add some value. And sometimes we do. In Sunshine's case and a few others, we get it right. So it's a combination of making sure we understand the business. And we'll give our views. We'll give our views around the kind of vehicles they're going to purchase for the application. So we do share that. So, so, so I'm a transport specialist. That's my passion. And around safety and, and due diligence, that's also what I'm really involved in. So, so I guess there is no other bank that must be Standard Bank. And he's bought 86 trucks that must be Standard Bank. So I think we can logically conclude it was Standard Bank that provided the support and the growth. But it's a good question. Thank you very much. I guess this is a kulecha over here. He's so enthusiastic. You've got to love that. So I think maybe just in conclusion, it's really a great opportunity. And we hope that you try and not do the predictable things. We hope you do some interesting things. And thank you for your time. I mean, there's a lot more to come. I'm particularly looking forward to protecting your transport investment from environmental and liability risk. Because the RTMS is smack bang in the middle of all of those things. I think it's going to be quite interesting. And thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy that. All my colleagues have my, my contact details. I come down often and visit. And I'd love to visit your operations as well. Identify gaps. I happily do a free gap analysis for RTMS. No problem, happy to do that. That comes from Standard Bank. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thanks, Harry. Thank you, Harry. And, and we still love you. It's, you know, incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kathy. Um, ladies and gents, uh, in appreciation for them sponsoring and hosting and providing a venue, I would like to hand over a gift from a transport forum for each of you, Kathy. And uh, Fashila, so if you can stay at the front. Yes. Now, this, there's a, Kathy, there's another gift. No, no, this is for your tea room. This is a transport branded clock for your tea room. Thank you for the venue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we'll put it there. Thank you. And then uh, Sheila. <laughs> uh, Sheila, thank you very much. This is a transfer forum branded clock for your tea room. So thank you very much for hosting us today. Thank you very much. All right, great. Never a dull moment at the transport forum, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gents, our next presenter is also a gold sponsor of the transport forum, Paxi. Uh, Bronwyn Aronser is the business manager for Paxi, PEP division of PEP Core Trading. And she's going to talk about innovation and logistics and women empowerment. Thank you, Bronwyn. We've been looking forward to listening to what you've got to say.
Never. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Kathy, for that full of life presentation. It wasn't death by PowerPoints, so and now you left me with that job. Um, um, also, thank you to Harry and the Transport Forum for the, for the opportunity. Um, Pep and Paxi is very, very excited to be part of this forum. Um, looking forward to learn um, as much as I can. And then just for the record, I do bank with Standard Bank. Um, and I've also got our, our bond for our home at Standard Bank, um, so I love Standard Bank. And that's not a joke, that's, that's the, real, the real deal. Um, I bring greetings from my employer, Pep Stores in Cape Town, where our central office is. I'm sure many of you, when you were growing up at some stage in your life, your parents must have bought you something at Pep. If not, then you're one of those lucky, wealthy ones. Your parents could always pop into Ackermans or Woolies for you. <laughs> um, so today I'm going to be talking about um, innovation in logistics, touching a bit on pickup points or collection points, as we call it in South Africa. And my story of innovation is really the story of Paxi. Um, and then um, I'm going to touch on women empowerment. How many strong women do we have here today? <laughs> if you're a wife, you have to be strong. If you're a mom, you've got to be super strong. So we've got many of you here today. So just very quickly, um, the cost of global parcel delivery, excluding pickup, Lionel, and sorting amounts to about 70 billion euros, with China, Germany, and the United States accounting for more than 40% of the market. What is great is that since 2015, almost increasing 300% in developing markets such as India and Africa, which is great, obviously, for South Africa as a whole. Now, about uh, close to four years ago, I was employed by PEP. Um, and let me take it a step back. Before I worked at PEP, um, I spent some time at DHL. And before DHL, I spent a good number of years at Bidvest and Alpina Logistics. So my background went from clearing and forwarding and importing and exporting to pure courier at DHL and then at PEP source to collection points. So it was a big gap for me and I needed to learn this industry. We then, I was given a mandate to say, Bronwyn, this is the idea we have. You've got 18 months to make this product or the service a reality. Um, come and do a business case presentation, apply for CapExes and the only thing we want from you and your team is a promise of a return on an investment, um, which was obviously very nerve-wracking time for me. Um, we then had a look at what the rest of the world is doing in terms of collection points or so-called pickup points. If you have a look on this slide, you'll see the United Kingdom was at the forefront where they started with a service called Collect Plus, where they've got over 6,000 collection points around the UK. And then in continental Europe, another big company is the Kiala UPS access points with over 8,700 points in eight countries reaching as far as Italy, Germany, United Kingdom, Belgium, France, and sort of all over. And what we've seen in the European countries and the rest of Europe and China is that online shopping obviously was much bigger there than it currently is in South Africa, and so the need for collection points became great because as many of you know, as transporters, home deliveries is not always the greatest game to play in. There's many, many failed deliveries before you actually get a customer um, at home and so you're spending up a hell of a lot more than you want to in terms of your transport or your logistics costs. This then became the innovative way to A, make sure the customer is always at home, meaning the pickup point or the collection point is always open. So you get the delivery correct the first time and it shaves about 20 to 30% off your transport cost, also giving the customer the convenience of collecting the parcel whenever it is convenient for them. Then Doddle, in the UK they've got about 62 collection points. It's a parcel shop at every tube and railway station in the UK. So you pop in there, you go and collect your parcel. There's even an addressing room, so whatever you purchase online that's clothing, you can fit it on if it doesn't fit put it back into the parcel and they return it to the, to the sender. Then the DPD pickup points is directly affiliated to DPD Laser. 
Um, they've got 20,000 pickup points, mainly in Europe, um, and also expanding into Poland and Russia at the moment. Then we go to Russia. There's a company called Pony Express, where they've got about 1,500 of these network points. Um, and similar to PEP, they do quite a lot of services, including insurance, visa applications, uh, ticket reservations, and also parcel collection services. Now, if you bring it a bit closer to home, the traditional way of us as South Africans, whether consumers or businesses, um, the way we send parcels is typically through the post office. Um, all of you know PostNet, so the post office is more a counter-to-counter -counter service where you can send from one post office to another or send documents to a home address. PostNet is a counter model where you can send from one PostNet to another. Um, and then Pargo is also a collection point where they've sort of partnered with a lot of click stores, um, TFG stores, coffee shops, pharmacies, um, and all of these guys around the world, they claim to have about one, uh, over 1,500 of these collection points at the moment, but they don't physically own these collection points. They've got agreements with them. Then very popular at the moment is the DSV drop boxes where you can drop your parcel into the box there. And I think they've got just over 200 of these lockers or drop boxes around the country at the moment. So with all this information taken, uh, taken into account, about three or four years we thought, how are we going to build a service with the mandate I was given and the team I was given that was going to be customer-centric um, and affordable? So as we know, many South Africans are cash-strapped. It's tough economic times. Along with PEP's mantra, we want to be best price in the market, lowest price, and whatever you do within PEP has got to fall within that low price, low cost bracket. So it needed to be affordable convenient and obviously it had to be a reliable service because you want the customer's parcel to reach the destination unharmed and obviously arrive there on time. Um, and as part of the studies, what we discovered was that most of the customers, or 70% of them, opted for a cheaper form of delivery, which was quite surprising because you would think that time would be more of the essence and when you order something you want it tomorrow. But customers actually want to pay less and they are willing to wait a little longer. 23% of them opted for a same day delivery um, and then reliability um, was 5% and then instant delivery was only 2%, which is surprising because so many South Africans and people I know want instant gratification. They want that parcel today or tomorrow, but clearly they don't have enough money to spend to get it there instantly. So what we did was we then thought, you know, taking all this information into account is how do we build a service for South Africans that was going to talk to our market but yet be relevant and fit into the current infrastructure we have as PEP stores. And we then built a hybrid model of all the um, services I just presented to you from taking the European ones, um, USA, as well as our local services into account. And we put a traditional feel to it so that South Africans could feel that this is something that could work in our space and we wouldn't be too intimidated by it. And that is how Paxi, the parcel service, was born. Paxi simply means parcel taxi. So what is great about the, the service and what really helped is that PEP is a trusted South African brand that's been around for over 50 years, and so instantly there was credibility with the brand, but obviously businesses um, were still not sure whether we can do parcels because we're technically not supposed to be transport or logistics gurus. Um, PEP at the moment has got about 8 million unique customers that come through our doors every month. We do about 5 million financial services transactions where customers can do money transfers, um, they can do cross-border remittances, they can apply for cap and loans, they can do bill payments where they can pay their DSTV accounts, their Avon accounts, you can pay 800 bills inside of a PEP, you can book a bus ticket, um, and you can buy airtime or a cell phone, and now you can also send a parcel inside of a PEP. So we looked at it to be this one-stop shop where customers on a low or shoestring budget who goes into town, specifically in the rural areas, maybe just once a month, to do all these transactions could then also now send their parcel inside of a PEP store. 
Then if you have a look at the PEP group structure and overview, and the reason I included this slide is because currently Paxi lives inside of 2,000 PEP stores. Um, but we're looking to similar as the Collect Plus models and the other models um, across the world is to start getting to the point where we can have it in about 6,000 collection points. Now, if you look at the group structure and overview, PEP falls into the discount store bit of the PEP core um, group structure where it's PEP stores, Flash, PEPCO, PEP Market, PEP Home, PEP Cell. PEPCO is in Poland. And what is very exciting for us at the moment, um, we actually just rolled out Paxi to one of our speciality group stores, um, Shoe City. And speciality group stores uh, consist of Shoe City, John Craig, Dunn's Refinery. Um, I think Techie Town will probably follow suit of the Shoe City. And then we're going to work our way to roll it out to all 6,000 PEPCO group company stores over the next two to three years. That is just the geographical spread of where our stores are located. And as you can see, there's quite a number of PEP stores um, across South Africa, which means there's quite a number of Paxi points um, accessible across the country. So what is Paxi? So Paxi is broken down into three different types of services where we focus on the send, collect, and return. Now, send is our counter-to-counter -counter parcel, where a consumer can walk into a store and send a parcel to any other PEP um, in the country. Um, but we also find many small businesses making use of the service because you can send a parcel for as little as 49.95 or up to 10 kgs. We don't weigh it. So um, it's about 20% cheaper than the National Post Office. And we also offer you a large bag that is way bigger than just the ordinary standard courier bag. So we find many businesses, which excited me so greatly. Um, they've got a small business. None of the couriers want to give them an account. But they also can't afford to use PostNet or PostNet is not too close to them. So now they've got the ability to be using whatever they're selling either online or out of their garage at home or from their living room and giving um, their customer um, accessibility to their product anywhere across the country for as little as 50 Rand. So you're really helping these guys expand you know, the number of customers they can serve and at the same time you're empowering their businesses. Um, then in terms of collect, We've partnered up with many, many corporate companies, too much to mention, where they're either selling something online or via catalog, so the likes of a home choice, say Avon and Amway. They're selling something to their customer who traditionally would have chosen a home delivery, um, but the courier makes two or three attempts before they get the customer at home, and it's costly and expensive. They have now given their customers the option of selecting a Paxi point closest to them to go and collect the parcel. We then keep the parcel in store for a customer for up to 14 days. Um, the customer is also updated on, the, on their parcel's journey via SMS. Um, they rock up in store with their one-time collection pin. Um, it's a unique pin. We scan your ID, you bring proof of identification. We scan your parcel out, you sign for it, and we provide those companies text PODs or POD images once the customer has collected. Um, we've actually had some talks with Standard Bank, I think about two years ago, there was a time where they were quite interested in the service. Maybe Jackie can help me to kickstart those conversations with the relevant departments again. But we're starting with one of our first banks this week by Digital Planet, African Bank, will be distributing their cards for customers to Paxi Points, because there's obviously more Paxi Points in the East Banking branches, especially in the rural um, areas. So this is just an overview of what Paxi looks like in store. So as you can see, there is a parcel counter in all PEP stores. That's how we store the parcels. Every parcel has got um, um, parcel location has got a unique barcoded location code where we scan it into for housekeeping. So when the customer comes, we know exactly which location to scan it out of and hand it over to the customer. Then just in terms of our pricing model at the moment, we've got three services. Um, the five to seven day service, we're actually going to switch off because we see that 75% of customers opt for the 49.95 service and about uh, close to 30 for the 99.95 service and they're not really choosing the service in the middle. So as of one March, that service will become obsolete. It, it will no longer um, be in existence. So some of the clients who's been using us since the inception of Paxi is the likes of Mway, Medipost, GNLD, 
Um, we also do UNISA students' assignments where they can drop it at a pep store and then we then send it via our taxi service to, to the marking centre in Pretoria. Um, so we do quite a diverse group of parcels, you know, from documents to medications um, uh, to cosmetics to clothing um, and our hopefully bank cards are going to come quite soon. So what makes Paxi different and, and what makes us really different is the fact that our prices are 20% more affordable than even the National Post Office. Um, our in-store consumer experience is 100% <coughs> consistent across all 2,000 Paxi points because we own the stores. Um, our staff are trained on the processes. Um, you know, compliance is measured. Unlike with other collection points, if you're walking into a Celtic garage or a fruit and veg stop or a clicks, your experience is different. And you find those guys are not too clued up on the process because it's not their service. They don't own it. They really don't want it in their stores. So the experience is not ex um, consistent for the customer across all the stores. Then, um, like I said, over 2,000 points, we operate six to seven days a week. We keep the parcel in store for 14 days so a customer has adequate time to come and collect it. It includes two weekends. Um, and it also helps suppliers save on last mile distribution costs with savings estimated at over 20% and many of our third parties have actually now started shaving 30% of their last mile distribution cost because their volumes are so high, we can obviously give them better pricing. <coughs> One of the other reasons also we're able to offer the service at only 49.95 for up to 10 kilograms is we leverage off our own PEPCO logistics infrastructure, which is PEPs, own transporters who deliver store stock to stores every week. So they're going there anyway, and then they just carry the taxi parcels for us as well. So if you're a business sitting here, whether a bank, an Amway, an Avon, um, what we offer third-party suppliers is, um, in terms of distribution, one to two days for main centers, three days for regional, four days for outlying. The maximum um, sort of weight and dimensions of parcels, we carry 600 by 300 by 300 and up to 10 kilograms. We give you a flat fee, line always included. In terms of technology, we offer track and trace parcels in real time. We offer live management, SLA, exception induction, status reporting for all our customers. And we also got many platforms for API systems integration with all of our clients. And like I previously mentioned, customers get SMSs about their parcels journey and we also provide POD images. Value added services, if the customer is unhappy with what they purchased, we facilitate the return so they can bring it into store, return to sender. We also give free limited value parcel insurance. Um, our third party clients get a key account manager and we also provide via a call center client service support. So to date, very proud to announce, Paxi has done one million parcels since our launch in the middle of uh, 2018 which was a great milestone for us um, after lots of blood, sweat and tears. Um, that was a great milestone to reach. So, thank you. So very quickly, I think Carrie asked me to touch on women empowerment, um, girl power. So what I love about women and how diverse it's become in the century and the time that we now live in is Females can become absolutely anything they want to. You know, 30 or 40 years ago, we did not have, you know, the opportunity to become anything we wanted to. And now you can become a pilot, you can become a professional football player, you can even become a firefighter. And I've got a six-year-old daughter, and what I love about the time we're living in at the moment is she doesn't just have to play with dolls. You know, I can teach her that Wonder Woman is also a superhero and so can you be, and it's not just little boys who can become superheroes, and girls have got to play with a doll and a tea set in the kitchen, you know, because we, um, we start shaping their minds when they're young, and you want girls to know you can become absolutely anything that you want to. Now, women, I don't know how many of you have given birth before. I did it twice, I'll never ever do it again. Don't <laughs> want to do it again. But I don't think men realize how strong you've got to be to birth a child into this world. It's hard work. It's not easy carrying that child for nine months. And the emphasis I want to put on that picture is just to show you the strength that women have. Sometimes we don't feel that strong and sometimes we get tired and we grow weary. 
But if I look at that picture, it tells me that we are actually so strong. How many of you have to come home after work, clean up the house, cook for your kids? I've got a one-year-old son, so I'm cooking with him on my hip. Um, and then the six-year-old is nagging for something, and your husband wants to find something. And you're doing all these things, um, and you naturally can do it without falling apart because of the natural strength that you've got on the inside of you. Men, I've got great respect for you. My husband is very hands-on, but this morning he called me and said, the school run without you and getting these kids ready killed me this morning, you know? Um, and for us as women, you know, we just do it every day. You know, it's just another thing um, that we do. And sometimes we feel like this, don't we? You know, um, you feel stressed out. You know, my son is teething at the moment, so I don't sleep much. I've got deadlines at work. I've got to get my daughter to extramural activities. And amongst all these little stresses, making sure their lunches are packed, that they're eating healthy, that you make cooked food, that your house is clean, so people walk in and they don't judge you, um, it can sometimes get overwhelming. And then on top of all of that, you've still got a career, and Paxi's got to reach one million parcels, you know? And you've got you've to manage that. And for me, it just speaks about the inner strength that women have that I really want to salute and acknowledge um, that women are so, so powerful. Men, you are too, but today is about us. Um, quickly, my story. So I grew up in Mitchell's Plain. I grew up in a um, impoverished, gang-ridden area where the system basically disqualified someone like me to become something. I was just another little girl living um, in a gang-ridden area with lots of violence, lots of poverty, lots of, lots of domestic violence, and I was not supposed to amount to anything. The system disqualified me, um, not just as a person of color, but as a woman. And the reason I'm putting this in here is because a part of my heartbeat is wanting to inspire younger girls and women where I come from to say to them that it doesn't matter where you grew up or what you did not have, but if you've got that passion and that drive, you can become something and you can become anything you want to. And I like to use my story to inspire little girls and even women in those areas to say, you can do it, you're not disqualified. Um, so my future looked bleak, you know, I was going nowhere. My parents could not afford for me to study. I was stuck in that system. And by the grace of God, I think when I was 12 years old, my parents got this big break, started their own business, cut a long story short, it went quite well. And for the first time, I was able to go to a decent school. Back then it was called a Model C school. Um, and it was outside of the Mitchell's Plain area. And that school exposed me to seeing, oh my word, there's a world out here. I got invited to my friends' homes and some of them had swimming pools and I was like, oh my gosh, people have swimming pools in their backyard, you know? Um, and I was exposed to what the possibilities were for me in my life. And instantly then and there, I made a decision to say that I want my life to have purpose as a woman and I want to become something and make something of myself. Um, Long story short, I went to study and I made it my mission to tackle jobs that were difficult and I wanted to show girls that you can do this, you're good enough. It doesn't matter how poor you were, where you come from, anything is possible for you. And I mean, the fast track, 36 years later, I can now proudly say that um, Paxi was my team's brainchild and we made it a success. I was. The system disqualified me. I wasn't supposed to become anything. But today I can proudly associate myself with something that's making a difference in the lives of South Africans. They can send their parcels with dignity and pride and still have a little bit of change left in their pockets to buy electricity or to buy a bread. And um, the reason why I love the service so much is because we make it possible for customers who live on a shoestring budget to look and feel good and to still do things with dignity and pride. Um, so in closing, I'd like to say to all women sitting here today, you are destined for greatness. Believe in yourself and just go for it. Thank you.
Ladies and gents, what an encouraging story. Thank you very much. And I'm so glad that Paxi is your brainchild. Uh, now we can associate with Paxi and we can support Paxi. Thank you very much. Also for your sponsorship. Ladies and gents, um, just want to get our program up here for us. I saw there was a little boo-boo on the program. Because according to the program, you're supposed to be in, London, in brunch already. But we'll work around that. Uh, it's now time to have brunch. Proudly supported and sponsored by Trade and Investment Kozul Natal. Thanks again, uh, Ashila. Uh, we'll give you 30 minutes. So can we be back here at 5 to 11? Enjoy. Thank you very much. <laughs>